Scientists in the UK have reversed the age of skin cells of a 58 year old man so that his biological age of his skin cells appears to be 28. So we're going to have a look at how they did this and we're just going to touch on some of the basics. I've read the whole paper on eLife Sciences. Scientists and researchers have turned the biological clock of a man from 58 years old to 28 years. Now, a lot of people say that the first 250 year old, the first person that's going to live to 250 years old, is actually alive today. That's quite an interesting thought experiment to think that, you know, hopefully we'll live to 100, 110, 120, I think, our generation. But some people say that the first 250 year old is alive, and it's probably thanks to this sort of technology. So to understand this technology, we need to just look at the basics. So first, the thing we need to understand is what are stem cells. Apologies if you already know what stem cells are, but you know, a lot of people talk about stem cell injections but aren't really sure exactly how they work. So in your body, you've got lots of different cells, heart cells, brain cells, all these different types of cells. You also have stem cells, which make up a good chunk of the cells in your body. Now the cool thing about stem cells, and there's three types, embryonic, adult, and something called pluripotent. Pluripotent sounds complicated, but it's just, if you look at the etymology, it's pluri, plural, lots of, potent, pluripotent which means, and that's the type we want to look at today, is that if you take your own stem cells and inject them anywhere in your body, that part of your body and those cells will change from stem cells into whatever. So let's say, for argument's sake, we take stem cells from your body, we inject them into your brain, your, those stem cells will then turn into brain cells in your brain, right? Fascinating. Now, in my last video, I discussed Yamanaka factors. Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize in 2012. Now, what he did is he reversed the age of cells. Now, he used four factors, right, which we don't need to go into now, that's probably another video, but he reversed the age of cells in the body to zero. So, that, just remember that. So, Yamanaka in 2012 reversed the age of cells in the body from whatever age of that adult, that person, to zero years old. So you made them back to their embryonic state. Now, going on to this paper, this is the cool thing, right, that these guys did. They use something called maturation phase transient reprogramming. Now, forget that word's complicated, just the only important thing to remember from that is maturation, which means mature, right? So with Yamanaka, he reversed the age of all of the cells to zero, but he didn't stop. Like, say you wanna be 25, right? He didn't say, right, stop at 25. What maturation phase, the first time these scientists have done this, is they've stopped the age reversal at 28 years old. And depending on how long they run these Yamanaka factors on the cells for, is at what age they, they stop at. Now, the issue with Yamanaka factors is if you reverse the age of skin cells to zero, they lose their identity, like they lose their memory. They might not remember that they're a brain cell, right? They might, and that's not what we want as humans. We want to remember what cells we have, right? Our, our cells need to know what they're doing. But by stopping them in the maturation phase at the age of 28, the cells retained and were able to retain and regain their identity so they knew what they were doing. That's the key factor here. So it's this maturation phase, transient reprogramming is, is, is the cool thing. The researchers found that the middle-aged cells were similar to the younger cells, chemically and genetically. I mean, that's just incredible, right? That's, that's the fountain of youth right there, from cells anyway. Skin's the biggest organ in the body. There's obviously lots of other cells to to, 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 tr to try this on. Now, our, I want to go through two more things. Number one is the byproduct of the other cool things that happen as a result of running this, I don't want to call it maturation phase transient rate reprogram, MPTR, right? But I want to talk about the core byproducts of that, and then I want to just to go dig a bit deeper into the paper and look at the schematics and the diagrams. So, with this MPTR, I hope I've given it the correct acronym, some of the byproducts were collagen levels were increased type 1 and type 4. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's 28 types of collagen in the body. Collagen is 30% of all the proteins in the body, so it's a huge part of the body. But we all know collagen, we think of it as this small thing that you know helps elastine and helps the skin look younger, which is definitely part of it, right? But types 1 and 4, which are part 4, making your skin look younger, the words were in the actual experiment that they were given a youth, produced youthful levels of types 1 and types 4 collagen. So that's an incredible byproduct. Second byproduct was that the gene that um, Alzheimer's is linked to was actually impacted positively. So that on its own is huge, the Alzheimer's gene. Because if you're reversing the age of skin cells, you'd, you'd, you'd imagine that the uh, impact of age-related diseases would be reversed as well. And the third cool thing that I read was about skin healing assays. So if you have a wound in, in the skin, that wound will heal much quicker with this experiment. So there are some really cool byproducts of this experiment that I think are unbelievable and kind of make sense in terms of 
age reversal of skin cells. Now, I made a video on parabiosis, which is about reversing the age of organs, not skin cells. So if you look at the video, I'll link to it here. If you tie an old rat to a young rat, the young rat and the old rat, the old rat reverses in age, similar to the age of the young rat. And it's basically been an experiment that's been carried out since the 60s, and they use blood fraction treatment, and there's lots of companies doing that now and have been doing it for a long time. But this is at the skin cellular level, right? So looking at the Life Science paper, this was probably the most important drawing there. Using a transcription age fibroblast RNA sequence from donors age one to 94, they found that transient reprogramming reduced the, the transcription age by approximately 30 years. But the crazy thing was they also observed a moderate reduction in the age of cells that failed to transiently reprogram, suggesting expression of the reprogramming factors alone was capable of rejuvenating some aspects of the transcriptome. And the transcriptome is the full range of RNA or messenger RNA. Now, one strange thing, which is something else I touched in my last video about telomeres. At the end of chromosomes, you have telomeres. And I don't want to say every two years, but roughly every two years, the telomeres shorten, and that's directly correlated to aging. So the shorter the telomeres, let's say they shorten 50 times in your life, by the time you get to 100, those skin cells, those, sorry, those cells become senescent. And then basically, when you replicate a senescent cell, you're replicating essentially a cell that's not growing anymore. And, and those telomeres are the things that are shortening. Now, this actual experiment did not reduce or increase the length of the telomeres, which goes against what we've been learning up till now about juvenescence. So that's another really important point to take. And I'd say the last thing I wanted to discuss is this was not an in vivo trial, right? So it wasn't done in humans. So we're hoping that the next phase will be carried out in, in, in humans. And um, I've contacted Dil G. Gill on Twitter. He hasn't replied. Um, I think he's left Brabham and he's now working at Outsource Labs, which are a big company that look at uh, rejuvenescence and reversing age. And also uh, this other wolf, uh, Reich, who seems, those are the two uh, scientists that seem prominent in this experiment. So worth keeping an eye on those guys. And if you're about you two, love to chat to you. Thanks very much guys. Please subscribe and I'll be back soon.